Right now, as we speak, the effort per transaction is at an all-time high. Like right now, we're putting in more work to get to a closing than we ever have before in history. How do we, what message are you preaching to get kind of back to business as normal where we have more inventory is, you know, I see a lot of people that I follow and coaches teaching this thing, you know, preaching seller rent back and, you know, things of the sort. What is your strategy and method to advising sellers to list their home? Same as before, right? So the, the, the strategy never changes, like the climate of the, of the market changes and kind of how we operate and what we, you know, the language that we use and how we advise our clients change, but our strategy is always the same. We want to have as many voice to voice conversations, right? With as many people in our market as humanly possible, period. End of story. The common denominator, right? The common denominator of all closings. Think about this. The common denominator is a voice to voice conversation. So I don't care where you get your leads from, by the way, I don't care if you use Zillow or Facebook or realtor.com or sphere of influence or what, however you do it. Okay. I'm not saying you need to go cold call everybody. Although I think that could be probably the best method, right? But I don't care where you get them from. As long as whatever your method is of getting leads, that it's that it's producing um, enough voice to voice conversations to keep you busy from nine to 12 every morning. And like here, here's the punchline right now, as we speak, the effort per transaction is at an all time high. Like right now, we're putting in more work to get to a closing than we ever have before in history. Inventory is at all time lows. And you know, demand is is through the roof. Now I was here in 2003, where this is a very like the climate of the, the market is so similar to 2003 in terms of supply and demand, completely different ball game with who the buyers were and, and what their intentions were. The big difference is buyers now are actually end users. They're buying it because they want to live there. They're buying investments to buy and hold. No, hardly, very small percentage of people are buying to flip the flip the property tomorrow, which is what was happening in 2003 and four. And so that kind of built this house of cards that event, eventually crumbled. So we don't have that right now. We got a really solid market, even though prices are high and things are a little crazy. It's actually a pretty solid market, especially with the regulations on lending. They're really making sure people can afford these homes. So unless something happens where people lose their jobs or lose income, we're going to be fine with the real estate sector. I think moving forward, um, we may see some kind of slight correction at some point kind of deal. But you know, what's really hurting us is lumber prices and materials for builders is crazy. So in a time where we really need supply, builders can't even build because lumber prices prices went up 200% since last April. It is a very interesting place that we're in right this second. But um, the strategy is always the same for me. First, I have to realize, okay, the common denominator is voice to voice. Okay, even if it's online leads, what do you, these these guys that are that are buying uh, Zillow leads and spend I know I know teams that spend a million dollars a year. And what are they doing? They have a team of agents who call those leads all day long, right? So it comes right back to talking to people on the phone or in person. So if we know that the common denominator denominator is voice to voice, right? There's not going to be a deal without voice to voice, period. If we know that, now let's reverse engineer ourselves into as many closings as possible. And so the equation is to have as many closings as humanly possible. We got to have as many conversations with people in our market as humanly possible. Really, that's the end of the story. So what we need to think of ourselves as is a data collector. Like all of you, when you wake up in the morning, I don't want you to think of, oh, how can I sell a property today, right? I want you to think, how can I meet people and get their contact information? and stay in touch with them forever, right? If we can add five people to our database every day, we are absolutely crushing it because the effort per transaction right now is at an all-time high, but effort per, per relationship created is the same as it's always been. It all comes back to your tone, your body language, your intentions, the fact that you are a hard worker and you're dependable and you do what you say you're gonna do, right? All those things that people really want in an agent, that's the way you need to be and that's what's gonna win listings. So it's not about approaching a property owner and seeing how we can and get them to list their property. It's more so how can we get this property owner to become our friend and like us forever and never forget who we are in, in which once they decide they want to they sell, then they're going to come to us.
That's the name of the game right there. And it's called personal branding. <laughs> it's called personal branding versus sales. Sales, you're out there trying to talk people into signing a contract, right? And after you do a deal, you got to go do that again and that again and that again, because chances are those people aren't coming back to you because they didn't like how you high pressure them into that last deal. But if you build a personal brand around being someone everybody loves because you do the right thing and you just want to help them do what they want to do. The reason why I sold so much property is because I don't try to sell property. I just, I let my clients do the deal on their terms, however they want to do it, whatever they want to offer, whatever they want to ask. I don't really have too much. I'll offer my suggestions. And then once I've offered my suggestions, then it's up to them to make the decision. Name of the game is data. When you wake up in the morning and think, I need to add five people to my database, five people to my database. I need to create five new friends in my market. And if you just let that accumulate over time, you got this database of people who love you so much that uh, you just can't lose. That's the thing. You When you do it like like this you can't lose that makes perfect sense so ricky speaking of which okay so we've been working on a sphere of influence how important that is building the database name phone number address email address i know you send a weekly email out to your clients once a week same day for the rest of their life how in the world do you manage to do that how do I not manage to do it though? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes like 30 minutes a week at the most to come up with this like elaborate email. Like if you wanted to just do deal of the week and just pick out like a really great listing every week and just send it out every Wednesday at 8.30 in the morning, heck, that's good enough. You just gotta have your name in front of them on a consistent basis. See, the weekly email, and this is why I do email because 90% organic reach, which means 90% of the people who are in your list are gonna see it at least in their inbox. They may not open it, but they're gonna see it. It's it's an impression um, when you know you post on social, right? That's like going to be a one or two or three or four percent organic reach, which means four percent of your followers actually see that content. Four, you want to build your business on four percent or ninety percent, right? I'm going to go with ninety percent. That's going to be my foundation, my building blocks, and then I'm going to stack social on top of that. That's the thing. A lot of people, social is the building blocks for them, and that's where it's great, right? It, it is great, and there's so many things you can do. And then when you get into the ads world. You know, it opens up so many doors, but let's be real. Let's, let's filter these, our clients, let's collect their data into a database that we can then for sure stay in front of them every week with the 90% organic reach. Why not? And so the weekly email on the same day of the week, every week forever shows them how dependable you are, consistent, hardworking, professional, knowledgeable. Like it does all the heavy lifting for you to show them who you are as a person. And then when you create it every week and you give your two cents and opinions on stuff, Stuff. like here's a great deal in the market and here's why I think it's a great deal and here's a great restaurant in the that just opened up and I went there for dinner last night and let me tell you something that was incredible I had the, the shrimp and da 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 tell a little story when they when you start to share about yourself and your thoughts to your to your clientele they just love you even more instead of these automated emails you know about how to cook shrimp at etouffee and like what color to paint your walls in the fall and 10 buyer tips and stuff like that it's horrible see when people see that automated generic content, they immediately think lazy.